I'd be better off just eating a regular cookie at this point, having a scoop of protein powder. That's a little ridiculous. No wonder they hide those nutrition facts there. Today, we're gonna take a look at some supplements, specifically from the raw nutrition line. Now, I'm pretty sure this is Seabums. I mean, I know it's what he uses. I think he's a part owner of the business. I'm actually affiliated with Harder Than Last Time Supplements, Greg Doucette's line of them. But when it comes down to it, a lot of this stuff is the same. There's some variations in pre-workout formulations and where they source protein and stuff like that. We're gonna get into it on this, see what they have to offer on the site, and let you know what I would and would not take of their products. So let's start, we have pre-workouts. I really like, you know, Chris Bumpsett has a lisp, so I really like how they've titled these Thavage pre-workout, that's pretty uh, good. Like how he just lets that be a part of his brand instead of letting it be something that holds him back. So good on him for being able to laugh at himself. So we've got all kinds of flavors here. No shortage of that. Let's see what their formulation looks like. And when it comes to pre-workouts, a lot of the core things like L-citrulline, beta-alanine, betaine, caffeine, a lot of these things that help with pumps and stimulants are gonna be very similar. So let's see. We have, you know, five calories a scoop. We got some vitamins, beta alanine, 1600. That's a pretty good amount. I've been taking beta alanine, adding it to my pre-workouts because the flavor I liked didn't have it in it from HDLT subs. And I've got a whole breakdown of their products too of what I would and wouldn't take. I'll link that for you as well so you can check that out. But just wanna let you know the things that I personally would take and what I think is a joke. Let's see the caffeine levels though. We have 130 milligrams in one scoop, 260 in two scoops, 3200 milligrams of beta alanine. So that's one scoop if you haven't taken pre-workout, you're gonna start feeling that beta alanine. You're gonna feel a tingle. People say it makes their butt itch. For me, I've never had that. Like it makes my head, my like top of my head and my eyes start itching if I take too much. So. 1600, you're probably gonna feel it. 3200 is pretty much my threshold now for while I start to feel it because I have been using it so long. But beta alanine buffers lactic acid. It helps kind of stave off that burn so you can push further through more reps before you really get that burn that just makes you have to stop. Yeah, I mean, that looks fine. And they've got all these things for like L-citrulline, betaine, tells you what all these big things that you'll see in a lot of different supplements do for you. My Thavage pre-workout makes me wanna lift a thousand pounds. He has a lot of good 1400 reviews, so. There you go, check that out. What would that say, evening? Perfect addition for my pre-workout, right amount of stimulant for my evening workouts. Dang, if you're taking 260 grams of caffeine, or milligrams, at night, that might keep you up, so be aware. They have some uh, non-stem stuff as well, so be aware that you may not wanna be taking caffeine stuff at night. Uh, let's look at, there's some beta alanine they have, cellular hydration pump products. Super Savage, let's check that out. Wow, one scoop, 6,400. Oh, that, yeah, beta alanine. I don't think I'd be able to handle that. I would be itching like crazy. That's twice what I normally take. I mean, this is the super one, so this is like the intense version. We have betaine. So everything's, this has creatine added into it, so be aware if you're taking something like this. I wouldn't suggest taking something this high every day. You know, this might be something if I took would be for powerlifting meat or maybe leading into a bodybuilding show those last few weeks where you're feeling like you're dead because you're so lean. And maybe even at the bodybuilding show, you know, like dry scoop a little bit, swish some water, get some of the stuff up to get a good pump and get you going for posing. 400 grams of caffeine. Yeah, that's like the max recommended daily dose for adults. So definitely high amounts of stems here. Yeah, dosage recommended. Do not exceed one scoop in a 24 hour period. As you see all these dumb kids, taking like 10 scoops of pre-workouts and going to the hospital. I haven't seen that happen in a while, so hopefully that trend is stopped. Let's look at one more. I mean, this stuff seems fine at first. Like, that's a little much for me. I probably wouldn't take that one. See this non-stem. Something I've been doing lately, I, I was taking one scoop of a pre-workout that has caffeine in it, so around 100 milligrams and what I use from HTLT. And I take that maybe a half hour before I work out, half hour to 45 minutes, and then I'll take a pre-pump and I'll drink that throughout the workout to get some more of the stuff that isn't stimulants because a lot of the formulation is similar, but without the caffeine. So I can get more of those benefits but without getting too much caffeine because I don't want to get dependent on it and I want to be able to use it when I need it, especially with my job because I travel all over the world, lots of time zones, and I got to the point where I would drink caffeine and still fall asleep an hour later if I had 200 milligrams just because I was so tired. 
and it wasn't working because I was getting so used to it. So I try to cut it down so when I do want it to work, it works well for me. When I'm flying a plane, I don't want to be falling asleep. So we got a gram of beta alanine, two grams there. Yeah, this looks similar to what I have. So this would be good. I like the pre-workouts. My, my go-to things like pre-workouts, creatine, are the big things, and then protein powders. So I'm not gonna go through all of them because that's a lot, but pre-workouts look pretty good. Test boosters. <sighs> raw test. Here's my thought on test food. I think these are just ridiculous. I mean, I'm not saying I would never take one, but if you're getting something like this because you feel like you just need to boost your testosterone, there's probably something wrong. I had someone comment before, like, I've had my levels checked several times and I'm just under 300 and my body fat's around 6%. I sleep around uh, seven hours per day. I lift six times a week. I eat mostly whole foods and track macros. My T is low, energy is low, and I don't build muscle. I'm curious about TRT or test boosters you could replace with that, but it's like, did you miss the very first thing you said? You're at 6% body fat. That is not healthy. You're, when you get that lean, especially below 10%, your natural testosterone levels are gonna start going down, and the lower you get in body fat, the lower they're gonna go, because you're screwing up your hormones, you need body fat to be healthy. Yeah, it might look cool to be super shredded, you see the guys on the Olympia stage, but it's not healthy. So. Don't go crazy with being super lean. If you feel like you need to take this to raise up your testosterone level because you're super lean and you're crashing it, you're not really going to the root cause of the problem. It's like just taking aspirin when you have headaches constantly and not figuring out, oh, there's something wrong. Oh, maybe I have a tumor in my head that's causing that. You never know. Let's get down to the root problem instead of trying to mask it with something like this. So I think test boosters are dumb. The only time I could see possibly taking one is if you're natural and you're doing bodybuilding shows, say maybe in that last month when you are getting super lean, I mean, it's unhealthy. It's an unhealthy sport. It's not healthy to be down to five, seven percent body fat when you're doing a bodybuilding show. But you could take something like this if it does help bring up your testosterone levels a bit, help you feel better during the end part of that prep. But then when you're done, gain some body fat back, get up to 10% at least, and just be healthy and live your life. Because no one cares but you if you're super shredded. You're seriously, you're the only one that cares. If you think you're gonna be getting some girl because you've got veins going all the way up through your abs and your chest and your back, you're just attracting another dude. So that's the truth of it. You get to 10%, 10 to 12, that's probably ideal for most guys. If you wanna look good, have a mixture of looking good, looking somewhat big, but not overdoing it if you're just trying to attract someone. So, test boosters aren't really for me. Uh, I, I look through this, zinc is, uh, I guess, zinc deficiencies can cause some hormone issues and testosterone going down some, but, you know, different stuff in there supposedly is gonna help. And same thing with HTLTs, three different test boosters. I think it's silly and I'm not gonna use it. Uh, we went over the non-stem pumps already. So let's see, protein, that's the kind of stuff I like. Protein powders, protein bars. Same thing here, Ithalate instead of Isolate. I like his uh, advertising, that's funny. So we got Thavage and Ithalate. So we have Isolate protein, but then here we've got grass-fed whey. I'm not sure, let's see what the difference is between these. So I'll bring up the grass-fed whey here. I'm kind of interested because I'm starting to get more into looking into things like farmer's markets, getting locally sourced stuff, trying to get more healthy versions of products. It is probably gonna be more expensive, but you know it's your health, so what kind of price are you gonna put on that? You can uh, buy brand new $1,000 iPhones every year, but we can't get better food. So typically find money for the things that are important for you. So let's let our health be important. What do we have in here? Look at the ingredients. Compare the regular isolate to the uh, grass fed. Micro filtered protein powder with zero fillers crafted from supreme quality to help you meet your protein needs. Okay, this 100% grass fed. Hormone free, micro filtered. This one's micro filtered. Protein powder, zero fillers. So it's the same thing, the only thing is hormone free. So I guess they make sure they get this whey isolate from hormone free sources. So there you go. Because uh, hormones from animals, could get passed through to you. Whey protein blend. Okay, so that's the isolate versus that. Let's see what this whey protein blend, because this is $20 cheaper. Let's see what this, micro-filtered whey protein blend, 
free of hormones, micro filter for optimum quality. I don't know what the difference is. They both say that it's hormone free micro filter just like this 100% grass fed says it is. So I don't know what the difference is there. I would, I would be interested to find out. Let me know in the comments if you know what the difference is between those because I don't see it. Got a protein drink. That's cool for on the go, but I'm probably not going to buy a bunch of those because if I get something like that, it's usually if I'm driving, I stop at like a Love's gas station or Bucky's or something, grab what they have out of the fridge. I'm not going to carry those with me. Vegan protein, that's cool if you're onto the vegan stuff. I actually used the vegan protein powder from Harder Than Last Time. I like it a lot better because all they have is vegan or whey plus casein mixes, which I don't really like because they're just too thick. I just like to drink them real quick. They're kind of designed for cooking. Casein's better for cooking, but it's really thick if you just want to drink it straight up. And it doesn't agree with my stomach that well, so I stick with the vegan stuff. Looks like they have some here, so that's good. I did see protein cookies as well. Man, that looks good. We've got milk and cookies. If the inside actually looks like that, it seems like it'd be a good cookie. Double chocolate, not as much. That looks pretty good. Strawberry toaster pastry cookie, birthday cake. Those look pretty good. I'd like to try them based on how they look on the packaging. Let's see, what is 18 to 21 grams of protein? Do we not have a calorie amount here? Where's the calories? Makes me think that they're probably high. Um. Amazing cookies, warmed up or unreal, so good reviews. I mean, that looks kind of dry. I don't know. Probably a lot of these things, protein cookie type things are usually better warmed up, but uh, I don't see any nutrition info on it. Maybe, let's see. Oh, here we go. Oh, wow, no wonder they don't make it easy to find. 450 calories for 18 grams of protein. 38 grams of sugar, lots of carbs. This, <laughs> this looks like it's a pre-workout cookie here. I mean, that's 113 grams, it's pretty heavy. I'll give you that. I mean, when I make oatmeal, it's, I get 80 grams, that's two servings worth. Obviously you add water, but 530 calories and only 14 grams of protein. Hulk, 74 carbs, dang, 450. Okay, I probably won't be eating these cookies because I don't want to, taste them and then think they're great and want to eat more. I mean, I'd be better off just eating a regular cookie at this point, having a scoop of protein powder. That's a little ridiculous. No wonder they hide those nutrition facts there. Yeah, for me, I'd much rather get an Anabar, like 280 to 290 calories, 20 grams of protein, tastes really good. We're kind of give you that candy bar craving, uh, satisfied, but this, that's a bit much, especially if you're trying to cut, that's, He's probably not eating these cookies right now in his last couple weeks of Olympia prep. Uh, almost to the end here, recover and fuel. So we've got hydrate drinks, creatine. That's one of my go-tos. I definitely suggest getting creatine monohydrate. I would say it doesn't matter where you get it. I wouldn't get the cheapest thing you could find. I made a video on that as well. I got cheap creatine from Walmart and it turns out, I don't know if there's something else in it, but I had reactions to it, got acne. A lot of people said, you don't get acne from that, but there's, some research to show, and I've had a lot of people comment on that video about their stories of taking creatine, getting acne, coming off it, going away. So be aware of that if you start getting acne, maybe get rid of it, try a different brand, see if that helps. Or just don't use it, because some, I remember someone wrote, I don't know what to do, I'm getting acne after using creatine, what do you suggest? And I was like, uh, quit taking it. I mean, it's maybe you could lift a little bit more weight, but is it really worth it to mess up your skin? Not really. Intro workouts, I don't, I don't think most people really need an intro workout. If you are eating normally, eating carbs, not doing keto, you're probably gonna have plenty of energy for your workouts. If you're working out more than an hour to an hour and a half at the most, and you've eaten before it, you're probably gonna be fine. So I don't really wanna get more supplements for that just because I might not wanna eat before going to the gym. Because if you think training fast, it's gonna do something special. It's really not. Amino acids, I've never used them. With stuff like electrolyte drinks, if you're working out like cardio, super hot outside, I've worked out before when it's really hot, sweated like crazy, didn't drink a whole lot or eat afterwards, and I had muscles cramp up pretty bad after that and hurt. So depending on your situation, Maybe some electrolyte drinks would be good to have around, but not something I would take regularly. And when it comes to sleep products, that's just a no for me. I don't want to get hooked on sleep products. I train myself to just sleep pretty much whenever. If I get tired, just sleep. With my job, like I said, traveling all over the world, 
all kinds of time zones. I mean, I was in Alaska one day, Vietnam another day, Korea another day, back in the US. You just sleep when you get tired, and that's what I do. And if you're training hard, your body fat's at a normal level, then you should be able to sleep pretty good. If you're getting to the point where you're so lean and you're thinking like, oh, I need to take some testosterone boosters and I need some sleep powders to help me sleep at night, that's probably a sign you're not healthy if your hormones are down and you're not sleeping. So try gaining some body fat perhaps before you start going to stuff like sleeping powders and uh, testosterone boosters. Let's see, we got a little bit more here. Ah, uh, yes. The fat burners, I also think fat burners are a waste of time. Essentially, the big thing with fat burners is it's a lot of stimulants most of the time. So more stimulants, what is that gonna do? It's gonna help you be more active, do more things, get your neat up, non-exercise activity, thermogenesis. When it comes down to it, especially if you're not going overboard with bulking and having to cut a ton, you shouldn't need a fat burner. You just get into a caloric deficit, slowly burn it off over time. Don't get fat when you're bulking, don't push it so far to where you need to cut like crazy and you feel like you need this. I don't wanna feel like I need to take something in order to burn fat. It's literally just a calculation of eating less than you expend every day. So eat less, move more, make sure you're still getting enough protein to maintain your muscle mass, train hard, and do a slow deficit. If you're doing 500 calories a day, a pound a week, shouldn't be that hard to slowly lose weight. If you start feeling really fatigued and you're plateauing, just stop, maintain that for a couple weeks, kind of feel normal eating a little bit of extra food, go back into it. It doesn't have to be done all at once. Let's see what they say about this. See, Johan Bain works blocking receptors in the body, which inhibit fat breakdown. Maybe something inhibits fat breakdown, but at the same time, you cannot just not lose weight if you're in a calorie deficit. Like, you can't break the laws of thermodynamics. You might think you have a thyroid problem or whatever problem, but if you eat nothing, you're not gonna keep gaining weight. Otherwise, you will have solved world hunger. You are going to save the world. Just insert that thyroid problem or whatever metabolic disorder it is into all those starving kids around the world, and they'll just get fat and be good to go. So, if you're in a calorie deficit, you shouldn't really need this. Let's check out one more of those. We got Essential Fat Burner, sold out. Guess people like it, feel like they need it. Caffeine, there you go, more stimulants. Green tea, gonna be stimulants in that. Let's see the other one real quick. Burn thermogenic powder. Oh look, this has Yohimbine at the same level as the Yohimbine itself. So if you want the benefits of Yohimbine unleashing that fat, then you know, you can get it in this too. Losing stubborn fat, I love that term, stubborn fat. There's not stubborn fat, everyone stores fat differently. You just gotta keep staying in a deficit until that fat goes away in that part. Mental focus. If you feel like you don't have mental focus, two things could be happening. You're not getting enough sleep. Make sure you get enough sleep. You're too lean. You're not gonna have mental focus. Get enough sleep, get a healthy body fat percentage. You're probably gonna be good. So that's raw nutrition stuff. And, wait, what's that? Recipes. That's interesting. Let's see what we got here real quick. Oh man, Greg Doucette, maybe you should, uh, Add something like this to the website if you want people to buy your cookbook, because he's got the cookbook. I have it with all tons of recipes in there, but it looks like we have some recipes for shakes, what you need, ingredients, how to make them. That's cool. His protein pancakes, protein bites. Look at that. So they got some recipes on here. That would probably be a good thing to do, Greg. You said, I know you've got some on your channel, but you've got thousands of videos, so it's not like it's gonna be easy to find for people that don't know it's there. But if they go to your website, you have some sample recipes, try this out, try this out, with this protein powder I have, with this, that could help with your marketing. So that's pretty cool. They've got some uh, stuff there to show people and help them with various recipe ideas, the best healthy snacks. I don't know if I'd call a 530 calorie cookie healthy with 79 carbs, that was pretty crazy. What's his name? Uh, Dr. Eric Berg definitely would not like that. You might be able to deal with it, but I know I would not be able to deal with this bar right here. But that is the raw nutrition supplements. They used to have Tricesterone on here. I guess they got rid of it. And uh, maybe after Greg started calling it out a lot since he started sourcing his, making sure it actually had Tricesterone, whereas him and I'm pretty sure 
the gorilla mode or mind, whatever it is from more plates, more dates guy is uh, still sells it, but it's the Chinese stuff that's just ecti-steroids. But yeah, that's uh, Turkestrone gone from their website, but that's about it. So let me know what you think. I'll see y'all on the next one.